The people of eastern Sicily are no strangers to the sight of their mountain roaring to life. Mount Etna, Europe's highest and most active volcano, has long been a restless neighbour, casting fire into the night sky and dusting nearby towns with ash. But on August 11th, 2025, just hours after news broke of a magnitude 6.1 earthquake shaking northern Turkey, the slopes of Etna once again glowed with fresh molten rock. The coincidence sparked an immediate question in the minds of locals and distant observers alike. Did the quake somehow trigger the volcano? The answer from scientists was swift and grounded in hard data, no? Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, which keeps constant watch over Etna's pulse, confirmed that no significant seismic variations occurred in the moments before the lava began to flow. There was no sudden jolt beneath the Sicilian soil, no telltale chain of tremors linking Anatolia's shaking earth to this Mediterranean giant. Instead, the eruption, which opened a new vent on the volcano's southern crater at around 3,000 metres, nearly 9,840 feet above sea level, was the result of local magmatic processes already in motion. In the days before the event, subtle signs, subsurface magma movement, slow summit subsidence and structural adjustments within the Bocca Nuova crater hinted at a system under internal pressure. When the vent tore open, it poured out glowing rivers that snaked downslope, a spectacle visible to villagers and tourists from miles away. The lava illuminated the summer night, turning the summit's dark silhouette into a jagged crown rimmed with fire. No ash plumes billowed skyward this time, and so flights at Catania Airport continued uninterrupted. By dawn, the fresh flow glistened against the blackened flanks, and the world's gaze, briefly drawn by the idea of a quake-triggered eruption, returned to its usual awe and wariness of Etna's capricious power. But while the fiery summit grabbed headlines, a quieter, far older wonder lay hidden in the mountain's belly, one that has captivated volcanologists and speleologists for decades, and which, to many, feels just as dramatic as any eruption. Beneath a crust of ancient lava, stretching almost invisibly beneath Etna's southeastern slope, lies Grotta Cassone, a colossal underground tunnel formed entirely by molten rock more than two centuries ago. Its scale is staggering, nearly 1,000 feet, about 305 metres in length, up to 10 metres, 33 feet wide, and in places 7 to 8 metres, 23 to 26 feet high. To step inside is to enter the preserved artery of an eruption long past, a place where time has stood still since the lava drained away. Grotta Cassone was born in the 1792 eruption of Mount Etna, one of the mountain's most significant historic outpourings. That year, a surge of unusually fluid basaltic lava coursed down the slopes toward inhabited areas, threatening to overwhelm farms and villages. In its upper reaches, a thick crust formed over sections of the flow, cooling in the open air, while beneath the molten river kept moving. As long as the vent fed lava into this insulated conduit, the flow maintained its speed and heat. Eventually, when the eruption slowed and the lava level inside the channel dropped, it drained away, leaving behind an empty tube, a natural tunnel carved entirely by volcanic fire. For nearly 170 years, this great tube lay undiscovered, buried beneath layers of rock and soil, until 1964, when road construction crews cutting a tunnel through the hardened lava stumbled upon an opening. What they found astonished them. A cavern so broad and arched it felt almost man-made, like a subterranean highway. The initial entrance was partially choked with debris from the blasting, but once cleared, the space opened into a yawning passage whose scale dwarfed the workers' lights. Stepping inside Grotta Cassone is like walking into the frozen bloodstream of the volcano. The walls bear the record of molten tides that once surged here, smooth in some sections, jagged in others, with ropey pahoho textures still etched into the floor. In the cooler outer zones, Delicate lava stalactites hang from the ceiling, formed when drips of still molten rock cooled and hardened in mid-fall. Along the sides, natural benches, horizontal ledges of rock mark former high points of lava within the tube, revealing where the molten level stood at different moments during the eruption. 
Some walls show thin, glassy linings from lava that cooled rapidly against the air trapped in the tunnel, while others display folded, wrinkled coatings from slower cooling flows. In some sections, the tube's roof rises to cathedral-like heights. In others, it drops low enough that explorers must duck. At its widest points, it spans more than 10 meters, 33 feet, easily broad enough for a modern highway lane in each direction. This immense capacity hints at the eruption's force. To hollow out such a volume, the 1792 lava flow must have been sustained and voluminous, moving fast enough to scour and melt its own channel, yet stable enough to maintain an insulating roof overhead. The geological significance of Grotta Cassone cannot be overstated. Lava tubes are well known on shield volcanoes like those in Hawaii, where smooth pahoho flows naturally form enclosed conduits. Etna, however, is famed for its rough, clinkery RR lava, which usually collapses before tubes can develop. Yet, here is a tube of unprecedented size, forged within an eruption that left an RR surface above. Research over the past two decades has shown that Etna's eruptions are capable of producing tubes under these harsher conditions, challenging earlier assumptions about lava morphology. In Grotta Cassone, parts of the floor still preserve smooth pahoho, suggesting that the final flows inside the tube were of a different texture than the outer crust, evidence of complex shifts in eruption dynamics. From a volcanological perspective, tubes like Cassone are more than curiosities. They are efficient heat-retaining channels that can carry lava far beyond what surface flows alone would suggest. Inside a tube, lava can maintain nearly its eruption temperature over kilometres of travel, allowing it to burst forth far downslope, sometimes unexpectedly. In hazard mapping, understanding the locations and connectivity of such tubes is vital. They can become reactivated in future eruptions, feeding new breakouts from seemingly dormant lava fields. In fact, studies of the 1792 flow field have identified Cassone as a master tube that likely fed multiple distal lobes, making it a critical part of the eruption's footprint. Today, Grotta Cassone is known mainly to speleologists and a handful of specialised guides. Its entrance lies unobtrusively near the road to the Sapienza ski area, close to the small locality of Piano del Vescovo. To a casual passerby, there is little sign of the vast space beneath. Those who venture in must bring helmets and lamps, for the roof is thin in places, and collapses have occurred over the decades. Yet for those prepared, the reward is a rare journey into the heart of a frozen eruption, one that few volcanoes on Earth can match in scale or preservation. Even after half a century of exploration since its discovery, Grotta Cassone continues to intrigue scientists. Mapping its interior in detail has revealed subtle variations in rock texture, mineral deposits and structural features that shed light on how the lava cooled and drained. In some recesses, tiny skylight holes in the roof mark where gases once vented, leaving chimneys through which light now filters faintly. In others, the floor buckles and folds, frozen in mid-flow like the ripples of a river suddenly turned to stone. These are not static features. Ongoing erosion, seismic activity and new lava flows could alter or even destroy sections over time. Etna, after all, is still very much alive. The volcano's August 2025 eruption is proof enough of that. And if history is any guide, new lava tubes will one day form beneath its slopes, carving out the next generation of hidden channels. Perhaps a century from now, Future explorers will walk into one of those fresh tunnels and say, as the discoverers of Grotta Cassone might have, we've never seen anything like this. In scientific circles, Grotta Cassone is not just an intriguing footnote in Etna's history. It is a living archive of volcanic mechanics, one that has helped rewrite parts of the textbook on lava tube formation. Its sheer dimensions, carved during an eruption dominated by RR surface flows, contradict the long-held assumption that only smooth pahoho fields yield tubes of this magnitude. Researchers from the University of Catania and INGV have mapped Cassone repeatedly, not merely to chart its dimensions, but to compare the internal architecture of its walls and floors with that of smaller tubes elsewhere on Etna. 
One of the most striking findings is the tube's ability to preserve a sequence of events inside a single eruption. Near the entrance, the floor is littered with angular clinkers, fragments of the brittle crust that once lined the flow. Deeper inside, these give way to smooth, glossy surfaces and even the telltale ropey patterns of Pahoho. This transition, frozen in place, records the moment when the lava within the tube shifted from a turbulent, high-viscosity state to a calmer, more fluid regime. In a sense, walking from one end of Casson to the other is like walking forward in time through the 1792 eruption itself. The scale of Grotta Casson also invites comparison to lava tubes found far beyond Sicily. Hawaii's Kazumura Cave, for instance, extends over 65 kilometers, 40 miles, and plunges more than 1,000 meters, 3,280 feet deep, holding the record for the world's longest lava tube. Iceland's Sertschele runs for about 1.6 kilometers, 1 mile. Its vaulted chambers are legacy of eruptions from the Halmundaran lava field. Against these giants, Cassone's 305-metre, one zero 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 foot length seems modest until one considers the context. Etna's tubes are rare, and those of Cassone's size rarer still, given the volcano's more explosive, less tube-friendly behaviour. In the European context, few lava tubes rival it for both size and preservation. Preservation is, in fact, a pressing concern. Etna's flanks are in constant flux. New flows can bury or collapse existing tubes, and the thin roof over parts of Casson means it is vulnerable to seismic tremors and surface erosion. Scientists and caving groups have advocated for stronger protection measures, from limiting uncontrolled access to installing monitoring equipment inside the tunnel. There is also the issue of environmental impact. The cave provides a microhabitat for bats, invertebrates, and specialized fungi all of which could be disrupted by increased human traffic. In recent years, 3D scanning and photogrammetry have emerged as tools for documenting Grotta Cassone in unprecedented detail. These techniques capture the cave's contours down to the centimetre, creating a digital model that can be studied without physically entering the fragile environment. Such models are invaluable not only for scientific analysis, but also for public education, allowing people to walk through the tunnel virtually. For a volcano that draws hundreds of thousands of tourists each year, this offers a way to share one of its most extraordinary features without accelerating its wear and tear. From a hazard management perspective, Cassone serves as a case study in how subsurface structures can influence future eruptions. Lava tubes act as efficient conduits, carrying molten rock kilometers away from the vent with minimal heat loss. In some cases, they can feed distal breakouts, sudden lava flows far downslope from the main vent that catch communities by surprise. Mapping the known tubes beneath Etna is therefore not just an exercise in curiosity, but a necessity for anticipating where future hazards may emerge. This understanding has broader planetary implications. Lava tubes are not unique to Earth. Evidence of them has been spotted on the Moon and Mars, where their vast hollow interiors could one day shelter astronauts from cosmic radiation and extreme temperatures. Casson, with its blend of unusual formation conditions and accessibility, offers a natural laboratory for studying how such structures form and endure. It is entirely possible that lessons learned from this hidden Sicilian tunnel will inform future exploration of other worlds. Yet beyond the science, there is an almost poetic quality to Grotta Cassone. It is the embodiment of a paradox, an empty space created by something as violent and unstoppable as molten rock. It is a place where one can stand in absolute stillness, knowing that centuries ago this same space roared with heat, motion and incandescent light. The lava that once raced through here is long gone, but the shape of its journey remains, etched into the stone like a memory the volcano chose not to erase. For those who have walked its length, the experience leaves a deep impression. The sound of footsteps echoes against walls that have not changed in over 230 years. The air is cool, carrying a faint mineral tang. The beam of a headlamp reveals folds and ridges in the rock that could be mistaken for the ripples of a stream, until the mind recalls they were once rivers of fire.
Outside, Etna continues its unpredictable rhythm of dormancy and eruption. Inside, Cassone is timeless. Even as the August 2025 eruption fades from the headlines, its bright flows cooling into yet another layer of rock, the story of Mount Etna is still being written, both on the surface and deep within. Each eruption has the potential to create new features like Cassone, though few will match its size or historical significance. To the scientists who study it, to the locals who cherish its mystery, and to the explorers who light its darkness, Grotta Cassone is a reminder that much of a volcano's life happens out of sight. What emerges from the summit is only the final act. The hidden chapters lie underground, waiting to be discovered. The next time Etna grumbles and spits its fiery warnings into the sky, the world will watch in awe as it always does. But somewhere beneath the mountain slopes, in the silence of a thousand-foot tunnel carved by an eruption long past, the mountain's deeper story will remain sealed in stone. And perhaps that is the real marvel of Grotta Cassone. Not just that it exists, but that it endures, a bridge between the violence of the past and the science of the future. If you found this journey beneath Mount Etna as fascinating as the mountain's fiery displays above, help share it with others. Like, share and subscribe to bring more of Earth's hidden wonders into the light.